this week's cut. All right, we're back. This is work in progress number eight, handle shaping. Uh, the uh, handle's all epoxied up and cured for 24 hours, and now it's time to get some contouring in that handle. Um, it's a nice rainy day. I'm sitting in the shop. Uh, all right, so I get a used belt. This is a 36 grit used belt. Um, taking my clamps off, and you can see that those paper scraps make it so that the clamps don't stick to the wood, even though there was glue on it. Uh, you can get the clamps off even if you don't do that, and it's not a problem, but it just makes it a little easier. And you don't have to clean all these pieces off either, but I do. All right. I use the... Uh, little two inch rubber contact wheel on the bottom for almost all this outside profiling in fact probably all of it uh, except for that narrow portion on the finger side um, rubber contact wheels make it nice to do this you don't wear them down uh, as quick I guess it does wear them down but not nearly as quick um, got lots of dust I'm gonna kick the fan on can't reach it <laughs> so I gotta get up such work All right. You got to be careful when you're using a wheel on this portion. That spine is not have any divots in it. So if you're on a contact wheel and you stop for a, even a short period of time, you'll end up getting little valleys in, in your uh, spine, which you don't want to do. But we'll clean that up. Even if it gets some, we can clean it up a little later. Just working around that profile. And I can get inside this portion with that two inch wheel. You see the sparks, it's obviously hardened still. Nice and clean. I hit the flats, get those pins knocked down if they're a little oversized. Uh, you don't wanna, if you're using metal, these pins won't heat up. It's, that's why the micarta pins are nice. They grind away at the same speed as the wood. If you've got metal pins in there, you can heat them, overheat them doing this, and uh, it'll actually make that epoxy uh, soften up, and they can move. You can also burn out that epoxy, so don't overheat metal pins. All right, we're going to change the belt to a higher grit just to polish that metal up while we're here doing it. I got me a new apron. This one's terrible. So uh, a local lady made me an apron and I love it. All right, this is a 120 grit used belt. I'm just gonna do the same thing just to get some of the big scratches out of that tang and spine. This is where I flatten those valleys out if there are any. Do it on the flat platen, clean that up. Pretty quick, nice and clean. All right. I think I saw some more heavy scratches, so I wanted to get those cleaned out. All right, where to next? Over to the small wheel. Sorry, Andre. I know he hates me showing this moving. He wants me to cut it, but. I don't believe in movie magic, so you get to see me move stuff. All right, this is a 36 grit belt as well. Uh, we're gonna get inside that finger well. Nice and clean. Mm 
And I'll clean up that Ricasso and out to the choil there. There's some space in there that isn't hit, so I'm just going to touch it. Got it all done. All right. I'm going to change out the wheel. And it's part of the reason I leave some of this in here is so those of you that don't have these grinders, uh, you can see what, how it works, how you change stuff out. Uh, this is just moving up to a 120 grit belt. Just polishing that up a little bit more. Now I believe I changed it out to the 10 inch wheel. I need to build a tool rack. Uh, just another thing that's on my list. This is the heavy grit belt. This is the 36 grit we're getting into the contouring. This is one of my favorite parts. This takes quite a bit of practice to get down. Um, and it's part of something I enjoy. One of, the, one of the things I enjoy most about knife making. So we're getting into that finger choil first and we're just curving, cleaning up into that. You can see it removes quite a bit of material. You can go slower than this if you want to. It's a little hard to see how much I removed. Maybe I can get you some better angles here. And I'm just trying to keep one side matching the other. So I don't move on to a different portion of the knife until I've got both sides matching. Because if you have one side not matching and you move on, it's really hard to get it back to where you can tell what's off. So I get this side to match the other side. So I'll turn it over and hit the other side. You can tell I'm taking this one down further. And then I'll flip it over and get the other side to match in this portion of the knife. So you can see I took some off the spine, so now I'm going to match. And this is a 10 inch wheel. It's what I prefer. There are a few knives that I can't use the 10 inch wheel on uh, because the finger groove is so small. Um, so I'm just showing that I'm, I, I've got to get them to match up. That needs to come off there a little bit. So you can change the size you're grinding by moving that tip left or right on the wheel and you can widen that grind or shorten that grind. Um, so I'm moving this to hit that bottom part to match the other side. I'm checking the faces to make sure they're square. That's the thing that a lot of times I forget. I've got to check that. So everything was squared up. Now I move on to the other portion, the back end of the knife. And I do the same thing, just make a match. So, I don't know what I was pointing out there, but I'm just making a match. Getting that tip, focus in there. Check those angles. I need to take a little more off. I touched the top, which I normally don't do, but I must have missed something. <clears throat> all right now I continue on and then I'm going to flip it over and get that spine in this portion of the handle now I'm working on the spine Check it with your hands. That's something I do quite frequently. Um, 
So I've got a bad spot here. Make sure it matches. And just check all angles. Make sure you've got everything sitting in the same spot from one side to the other. Check the butt. There's needs some to take off that back end. I could see it on the video. I don't know if you guys could see it was a little thicker. Getting better. Check it again. Still off. All right. Check those spots. Check there. All right, so now this hump right here that's going to be in the palm of your hand, I'm going to knock that down on one side. And I just do make it so that it's a straight line across the entire piece of wood in relation to the tang. So there's the same thickness, and then I work my way into the swell. So I just kind of knock that down. It's too fat right now. It's uncomfortable in your in your hand. And you'll just constantly put it in your hand, feel it, See where it feels strange, move your grip um, so that it's comfortable in all positions. Um, so you can see I've knocked that big hump down. Uh, now we're going to make this side match. And it takes quite a bit of practice, like anything else, but I promise if I can do it, you guys can do it. And you'll find out things you like better than a different way or as you go. And that's the best way to do it. Get a starting point and then figure out what works best for you. Some people like... Nick Wheeler uses a 2 and 3 inch wheel for this stuff. Uh, he makes a different style knife than I do, but uh, you may like a different size wheel when you do this. I haven't tried it on an 8 inch wheel. I seem to think that that might work even better but I haven't done it yet but so far I, I feel pretty good about how my handles feel in the hand I have large hands I make knives that don't fit me perfectly because I know that most people have a smaller hand than me um, so again I'm just feeling to see where the weirdness is I think it feels pretty good and I'm just gonna knock those sharp corners off that butt make a match all right starting to look like a handle I'm going to change it out to the small wheel now that'll allow me to get that finger side this wheel won't let me get inside the finger side because it's too big uh, so the small wheel will let me knock those corners off. I need to shave. I did shave. I'm actually clean shaven right now. Uh, I celebrated my wife's birthday, so <clears throat> she didn't want me to look like a bum. So this was pre-shave. The reason I run that wheel with my fingers is so that it doesn't track over and grind into my wheeled arms. Or my wheel arms. So this is me just knocking those corners down. Doing a little bit of shaping. You got to be careful in this section. Just watch what you're touching uh, with the wheel. Also, those the face of that scale is really sharp. You got a sharp edge on the wood, so you'll see that I kind of roll that edge with this small wheel. Uh, that takes a little bit of practice, and and you got to be a little careful uh, that you don't touch your blade because that you can't fix that, and it goes to the uh, box of shame if you end up doing that. So I'm just rounding those edges a little. I don't go all the way down to the tang. I don't want to grind with this wheel down to the tang. So that's what I was talking about. That edge is sharp up there. So I'm just going to kind of roll over that edge to knock it down so that it's not sharp. That'll If you've got a leather sheath, that'll just eat up your leather sheath. It's also uncomfortable. So knock all those corners down. And you'll clean that up a little bit by hand a little later on. But this makes it a little quicker. Uh, I don't remember what I was talking about before. Oh yeah, I don't go down to the tang. 
Uh, I leave wood so that when I round it by hand that it just takes that corner off and I don't grind down to the tang. Uh, when I started out I would go too far down when, on these edges and it would look really bad when you can see tang from the side. Uh, I don't like that look at all. So I leave some wood there. So we've got it all cleaned up. That's enough. That's all of the machining. And now we're going to go to doing it by hand. Looks good. So the spalted line went through on one side, but the other side didn't come through except right on the, the bolster. Uh, so now I use painter's tape just to protect my blade. I just wanted to show you what it was like to tape it up, or how I tape it up anyway. So I break this one a little long, and then I fold it over. And then I also put a piece right around to hold it together. And this is just to stop scratching. Some people use electrical tape. Uh, I like the painter's tape, but whatever suits your fancy. This is a little device I made myself. Uh, they make There are nice ones out there. This one's got some serious issues, but um, I have an intimate relationship with it now, so... I don't dare throw it out. Um, that sounded a little weird. An intimate relationship. Uh, it holds sentimental value. How's that? That sounds better. All right, so it's just a pipe that fits inside a pipe. Those are rubber uh, pads inside so that I don't mark my blade up. And then one side moves. That's what that thumb screw is to, to clamp down those rubber pads to hold the blade. There's also another... You can swivel it left and right on that base that's screwed to the, the bench top. All right. I don't buy a lot of stuff from Harbor Freight, but I do buy my uh, sand cloth from Harbor Freight. It's cheap. Um, 120 grit That's what I use for this. You just tear strips. <clears throat> and you're just going to work that strip on the spine. You're going to roll those wood edges get everything nice and smooth, comfy. This adds a ton to comfort. So you're just running down that spine, getting all those corners rounded off, any high spots down. Um, this is a big time saver. So this is a part that I have to do on every single knife. And I put my thumb on the back to give it some pressure on that spine to clean it up a little. And it doesn't take long. That's enough to knock those edges down. And I go to the finger side. On this finger side, you'll want a fairly thin, see how I angle that funny? You'll see on this side better so that I can push it up on that handle on the bolster. Uh, you'll want a thinner piece for this portion so that it contours to those curves in the fingers a little better. Pretty straightforward. Just touching up a little more. Now I do the sides. Same thing, just a little wider angle. It's not as steep because it's wider piece. So tear off another strip. And I kind of roll that sand cloth over that edge that we softened to help clean up any scratches and stuff. Uh, but you can see this doesn't take too long. Use my thumb to get rid of any extra hard scratches. And just soften her up. In this, because I'm using the uh, micarta pins to hold it together, they, they grind away or sand away at the same speed as wood, basically. When you have a metal pin, uh, that metal pin does not wear away very fast. So you, you're sanding wood, but the metal pin is staying bold, which adds an extra step to this process. I, once I get it knocked down and cleaned up with this, I have to take a file and file those pins down so they're flush with the wood so you can't feel those pins. Um, 
I won't have to do that on this because I'm using the micarta pins. Um, but I'll do in a, a more advanced handle assembly where I do my bolster and base, where I've got two different types of handle materials. Um, I'll do a how-to on that down the road. Uh, it's a little more in depth than this was. I just want to keep this simple. So, all right, we're good there. I think maybe get rid of some little scratches that are showing up. So remember, we ground on the machine the opposite way that I'm going now. So I'm just trying to clean up those scratches left over from the machining. And I did all that work on the 10 inch wheel with 36 grit built. So this knocks those scratches down pretty, pretty well. If it didn't, I would have probably started using a 120 inch or 120 grit belt so that I didn't have so much removal, but you can see this works pretty fast. So I don't hit it again with a 120. Just clean up that butt a little bit. All right. Now I use 100% tongue oil. Um, I got it at my local wood. You can't get it at like Home Depot or that. I got it at a wood specialty store. Um, and I just apply a little bit on it. Use a cloth to spread it around on both sides. The thing about tongue oil is it, when it heats up, it kind of melts and then it hardens. So all these, it has microvoids in this. This tongue oil, once I hit it with sandpaper and get it going, you'll see how it uh, kind of hardens up and fills any kind of cracks or voids. So I really like the tongue oil finish. Nice shine on the wood as well. And then once I've got the tongue oil on, I let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes, which I've already done. Uh, so now I'm back. I've got a little block I made. That's that's a piece of micarta. It's actually uh, called... Oh, I can't remember what it's called. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, but I've got one of those soft felt pads that I use on a lot of my processes. Um, and this is a 220 grit sandpaper. And I'm just hitting all the surfaces, making sure it all gets nice and cleaned up. You'll see that this tongue oil gets caked up on the sandpaper. I'll show that here in a second. And that's actually spreading it into those cracks and anything that needs to be filled. Um, kind of like a waxy stuff. See all that kind of stuck on there? So that's nice that it um, cakes in those voids. And I'll do one whole side with the same spot just to help smash all that stuff into the cracks. I'll go to the other side and I'll switch it over to a portion that's got some grit left on it and start working that side. So you can see that spalted line coming through this side. You don't always know what you get, but it uh, still looks nice. Sounds like they're working on some trees in our yard. The power line. Uh, the city's cleaning, clearing trees away from power lines, so they're getting rid of some of our branches, which is nice. Just touching it up a little more. We're almost done. section and hit the spine that's something that I have to work on I, a lot of times I don't clean up my tang as well as I should um, so spend a little time cleaning those scratches out of that tang uh, there's always things you can work on 
That's one thing that I need to. All right, we apply a little more tongue oil and then let it sit again. Um, and then I go up to 320 grit. You don't need a ton of tongue oil, it just needs a thin coat at this point. So I'm just doing a little bit. That was it. So there's the finished knife. I hit it with 320 sandpaper the same way I just did it. Uh, looks pretty sweet. I've got a leather sheath I already made for it. Um, really happy with how it turned out. I'm going to go ahead and sell this one off. I'll list it up probably today. Uh, thanks everyone for listening. This has been fun. Uh, I will do some more advanced stuff. Stay tuned and uh, appreciate any comments. I'd love to know who's who's watching these. Thank you.